Macintosh here and in today's video we're going to talk about Apple hardware diagnostics on your Apple Silicon Mac. The way to get into the built-in hardware diagnostics has changed on Apple Silicon. I'm going to go over what you need to do to get into the new diagnostics and I'm also going to talk about why you would ever need to use diagnostics. So let's jump in and get talk about Apple diagnostics. Apple put this on all the Macs, even on the Intel Macs, to help you as a consumer diagnose any hardware related issue. This will help you if let's say you're having maybe a keyboard issue, a trackpad, uh, LCD issue, sound, microphone, any of those, you can run through multiple tests to show you if one of the things maybe fails or they all pass. So it used to be called Apple hardware test, now it's just called Apple diagnostics. So let's read what this says here. If you think your Mac might have a hardware issue, you can use Apple diagnostics to help determine which hardware components component might be at fault. Apple Diagnostics also suggests solutions to help you contact uh, Apple support for assistance. Now that we know that and we know what Apple Diagnostics does, let's talk about how to boot into Apple Diagnostics on your Apple Silicon device. So you guys will be able to see what it looks like on the Apple Silicon device when I power it up. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the Apple Silicon Mac is completely off. Once it's off, you can hold down the power button and the Mac, you'll hear the Mac chime and then you'll immediately see a menu that says continue holding down for startup options. As soon as you see the next screen that says loading startup options, you can let go of the power button until you see the boot picker or the Apple recovery selection menu. And here it is. So we're gonna, we see our options here. And in a second here, we'll see the hard drive icon. Now that we're here, we can get into the diagnostic mode. If you clicked on the options here, this will get into Mac OS recovery for you. If you clicked on Macintosh hard drive and click continue, that would bring you back into Mac OS, into your operating system. So to get into diagnostic mode, we need to hold down command D and then it'll, you'll see here, that says continue holding to start diagnostics. So we're gonna continue to hold, it's rebooting and it's gonna now boot into Apple diagnostics. And we'll give it a second here to boot. And you can hear the chime, so it's rebooting now. And again, that's different because on Intel devices, like if you need to boot into safe mode or diagnostic, you boot directly into it from those the keyboard commands, command D. So here it is, it's verifying network connection. And you can see that it's got the it's got the diagnostic loader in the menu loading it's downloading the diagnostics from Apple, initiating the diagnostics, and you can see that we're loading in here. That we're at the run diagnostic screen it just tells you that in, in order to investigate your issue apple needs information about your system such as device event identifiers hardware and software specifications and usage information by selecting i agree and pressing the return key you acknowledge that apple may collect use and retain this information for diagnostic and support purposes as well as improve its products if you do not want to run you can click run offline and then uh, or by pressing ESC. So we're gonna click I agree here. It's gonna connect to the diagnostic server. It's saying waiting for a session. We'll give it another second here. Now it's checking. It's immediately now running all of the hardware tests that it goes through. It's gonna test your fans. It's gonna test the LCD screen. It's gonna test your power adapter. It's gonna make sure that you get enough power going through. It's gonna tell you that it's gonna test all kinds of different things and we'll look at the menu actually you can hear the fans kicking up right now you can hear that so it's testing to make sure that the fans can run at the highest rpm and then it just spin down right now again it runs through a gambit of different tests once this finishes here i'll show you what that menu looks like and you can kind of see all the tests that it runs and it locked up no matter what i did i could not get the Apple Diagnostics to run on the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. I've got the Apple Silicon Mac Mini here that I'll be able to test over the next couple of days and I'll let you guys know if that works on there. Maybe it's just a problem with the Pro, maybe it's a problem with Air, maybe it's a problem with all Apple Silicon devices. But it basically got to that fan part that, we, that I just went over about right here and then it just locked up. That was the live one. I went back and I tested again and I clicked run offline and it's still locked up. And, and I wanted to clarify that real quick. I, when I was looking over the video, I didn't clarify the offline and the online. The offline will just run the test locally and give you the result. The online will send the results to Apple and it'll show up, show up in your, your record. So when they pull it up, you can they can actually see some of the diagnostic records. So that's what that offline and online mode mean. So again, it does not work as of 11.0.1 .1 Mac OS Big Sur. And it could be fixed in the future, maybe as soon as 11.1. I'll let you know in the comments or in a pinned comment as soon as it's working so you guys can test this out for 
for yourselves and see how it works. Here's the screen that you're gonna see when the diagnostic test is fixed on Apple Silicon devices. You also see this on Intel devices, that's working fine. And it'll say no issues found or it'll give you a reference code. And that's kind of the end screen when you know that the test is complete. Now look, there's an there's a link here that shows you learn about Apple diagnostic reference codes. So we can click on that and we can kind of see which ones that can be displayed to kind of tell you if there's a problem with each individual section. For example, there might be an issue with the ambient light sensor. There's an issue with touch ID. There's an issue with Wi-Fi. There's an issue with the touch bar, camera, USB, all these different things. So again, very useful when you finally do get a code or you are having a hardware issue. Hopefully it says, that there's no issues found and you don't have to worry about anything. But if there is something wrong, at least you can kind of zone in and figure out what it is right from these diagnostic results. I hope this video created value for you. If it did, consider liking and subscribing to this channel so you can get more videos like this in the future. Thanks a lot and we'll talk to you next time.